Let's remember this morning that God saves. In the midst of coronavirus, whatever's going on in your life, hold that true in your heart. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you lifted on your wings and the world will see that our God saves, our God saves. Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down as your people sing we will rise with you lifted on your wings and the world will see that our god saves our god saves everyone. Welcome to Genesis Church Online. I am so glad that you've joined in with us. The purpose of our time gathered together in this unique way is to put God in the highest place. And I hope uh, during this gathering, God just sparks in your heart something new. I want to point out that uh, Genesis Church has resumed in-person gatherings. We began last week and if you're ready for that, uh, I point you to the website to get more information about what's going on with that. I also want to point out that beginning next week, our online gathering is going to have more of a live feel. So uh, if you tune in next week, you'll see a little bit more of a live feel. I want to point out our one thing for this Sunday, which is happening August the 12th. So pull out your calendars and write it on in there. It's a family fun night. It's gonna go from 6 to 8 p.m. And we're inviting all the families out. We're gonna have some kind of a dinner and a lot of, kind of like a field night kind of thing, most likely on one of the soccer fields close to the church. It's gonna be a great time, a great chance to see everybody and to run around a little bit and to do some different stations. So I invite you out to that. At this point, we wanna begin our time by inviting God to meet with us. So let's go to prayer. Good morning, Genesis. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, 
It is so wonderful that wherever we are, you are with us. Whether we're at home, in the woods, on the lake, or at the Genesis Center, you are in us and among us. We join together this morning from various places with one purpose, to worship you. We come to turn our attention to you, to put you in the highest place, and to learn from you. Today, Lord, at this moment in our history, we desperately need you. You have given us this beautiful gift of diversity. We see it in all of your creation. Where you could have given us just one type of tree to produce oxygen, you gave us amazing variety. Where you could have given us just one flower to produce pollen, you awed us with every shape and color. When we look out over the bay, we could see just one shade of blue, but in your magnificent artistry, you cause it to display a multitude of blues, greens, and grays. We are so blessed by these gracious gifts. And then there's humanity. You created us in your image. You gave us a beautiful spectrum of skin color, hair color, and eye color. You gave us many shapes and sizes. And instead of being awed and inspired by our beautiful differences, we choose to use these differences as weapons against one another. We distrust, hate, and even murder based solely on skin color. Colors you gave us. Father, forgive us. Put us on the road that you call us to, the road of reconciliation. Your word says that if your people who are called by your name will humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear us from heaven and will forgive us our sins and will restore our land. We desperately need that restoration, Lord. We are such a stiff-necked and haughty people. We have a hundred excuses to continue living divided as us and them. We know this is not your desire. If we cannot humble ourselves, be people of prayer, and turn against racism today, then I ask, Father, for you to humble us. Jesus, shine your light into each one of us and expose whatever darkness is there. Lead us to true repentance. You have called us to be the light of the world. We cannot be light when we allow brothers and sisters to suffer hatred and injustice. Jesus, wake us up, humble us, forgive us, and activate us. I pray all this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, my soul will worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I will worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I will worship Your holy name. Your you're slow to anger Your name is great And your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on singing 
10,000 reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh, oh, oh my soul Who oh, worship His holy name Sing like that My strength is failing The end draws near And my time has come Still my soul will sing Your praise unending Ten thousand years And then forevermore Bless the Lord Bless the Lord His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I will worship your holy name I will worship your holy name I will worship your holy name Matthew 5 verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and, give, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Light is amazing, isn't it? Light is essential to our lives. And I know a lot of us talk about food and water and shelter as essential to living and as basic needs, and they are. But I also believe light is essential to our lives as well. Sometimes we, we realize this in the middle of winter when, when the power goes out. We might be sitting watching TV late one evening after work and, and all of a sudden it's dark in the house. We have to scramble around and find a flashlight or something to light up the room so that you can see. This happened to us not too long ago during a windstorm. The power went out and I had to scramble and find a flashlight so that I could get down to the basement and turn the generator on. Light, light is essential, but light has multiple functions, doesn't it? Uh, light just, just doesn't give us the ability to see things, but light can get our attention. If, if we're sitting in, in the phone and holding our phone and the light of the sun reflects off someone's phone and it hits us right in the eye, that gets our attention, doesn't it? Or if someone's driving down the road and flashes their high beams at us, that light gets our attention. Um, light gets our attention. Light also gives us direction. It's the reason why we have headlights on the front of our car for when we drive at night. Uh, it's, it's the reason why uh, certain paths are lit. Uh, if you have a sidewalk and have lights down your paths, it's to give us direction to where to head. And light also can expose things that we don't normally see, right? I don't know about all of you, but there's a, a specific time during the day when the light shines through the windows of our house just right that you can see all the dust and dog hair on the floor. Maybe that's just me. But light does expose things that, that we normally can't see. And I think it's really fitting that throughout Scripture, throughout the Bible, it describes Jesus as light. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. 
God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave light, life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, the one who gives to everyone, was coming into the world. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Jesus was the true light of the world. And, and the light that Jesus had was the light that he was reflecting from the Father. Jesus was God in the flesh. In Hebrews, it says the Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. Jesus is the light. And Jesus possesses those same characteristics that I talked about earlier about light. Jesus got our attention, right? He came, lived a perfect life, died a death that we deserved on the cross so that we may be made right with God. He got our attention. And Jesus also gives us direction. He gives us direction because he is God's very nature in human form. He showed us what God is like. He showed us how to live. He showed us what it meant to be God in human form. Jesus gave us direction. Jesus also exposes things in our life that maybe we can't see. He, he exposes those things through his grace, through his truth. And yet he forgives us of those things when, when they're exposed, if we want to be forgiven. Jesus is the light and and I think it's it's amazing that, that Jesus, being the light, looked at his followers, looks at you and me, and says, now it's your turn. Jesus wants us to be light as well. Our main passage today is from Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16, as we continue in the Sermon on the Mount. And it says this, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, sometimes when we're reading scripture, sometimes we pick up the Bible, there are, there are passages that, that may be hard to understand or we read them and, and we've got to chew on it for a while to understand it. But Jesus in this passage is very clear. He says, you are the light of the world. You meaning you and I, the church, we are the light of the world. And he is, he is giving us the opportunity to join him in, in his mission. He is, he is filling us with his light so that we can fill the world with light. He gave us something that we don't have. He gave us something that we don't deserve. And he says, go out into the world and be my light to others. Now, why, why, is, why is all this important? Well, I don't have to tell all of you, but, but we live in a world that, that seems to be getting darker and darker. We, we live in a world where there is that is filled with hate and division and in need of the light of Jesus. And I like to think that the greater the darkness, the greater the opportunity for, for God's people to shine. I know when I was an athlete growing up and uh, we played pickup basketball games and uh, maybe we played pickup football games out in the field, I always wanted to guard the best player on the other team because I knew that the greater the challenge, the greater the opportunity. And the same is true for us as followers of Christ today. The greater the darkness in the world, the greater the opportunity for us to shine. And there is plenty of darkness in the world. And so that means there's a great opportunity for us as followers of Christ. And so you may be thinking, okay, 
Jesus is the light. He, he was perfect. Uh, and he wants me to be the light. But how, how do I go about doing that? How do I go about being a light in a dark world? Well, I think there are a few things that, that we can do in order for us to be a light in this dark world. And there, and there are, there are plenty of things, but I'm just going to go through a few. The first thing is, is we have to repent. We have to repent and acknowledge that we have not completely lived out God's call for us to be a light in this world. And when we, when we think about that, if we're evaluating whether we've, we've been a light in this world or whether we haven't, uh, let, let me describe to you what light sounds like. And this comes from Galatians chapter 5, verses 23 through 26. This is what will happen in us when we have God's light shining through us. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. If God's light is shining through us, we will exhibit the fruits of the Spirit. And it is, it is okay if, if you feel, you know, maybe I haven't lived up to that. Maybe I have not let my light shine. You can repent and say, God, I'm sorry that I have not let my light shine. Help me to do that. Fill me with your, your light so that I can shine. Because otherwise, this dark world, here, here's what the darkness looks like. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. I think we can see plenty of this darkness in our world right now, especially hostility, quarreling, outbursts of anger, division, dissensions. And as followers of Christ, we're called, we're called to step into that. We're called to step into that and be a light. It says uh, a few verses before in Galatians, we have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but do not use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. We can repent and say, God, I, I really haven't done a good job loving my neighbor. I, I want my light to shine. So the first thing we do is we, is we repent. We repent and say, God, maybe I, maybe I haven't done a good job letting my light shine. The second thing that we do is we fill ourselves with the light of Jesus. Did you know that you can't be light unless you have received the light? So maybe you ask yourself, have I truly received the light of Jesus in my life? Maybe, maybe today, listening to this, it might be the first time that you have recognized that Jesus it should be the leader and forgiver of your life. You can receive him as your savior and you can in turn become the light that he is for us. So you have to ask yourself, have I received that light? Because you can't give what you don't have. You can't give someone else light if you don't have light in your heart. Net, it, it, along with that and filling ourselves with Jesus, if you are currently a follower of Christ, what are you feeding yourself with? What, what, on a daily basis, are you feeding yourself with the life of Jesus? Because we know something to be true, that what you feed will grow. When you wake up in the morning, what, what's, what's the first thing that you're feeding into your system? Is it your Facebook feed? Is your social media feed? Is it uh, may, maybe the news? Or is it the light of Jesus? Are, are you spending time with God? Are you filling yourself with that light? What are you absorbing through the day? The fruits of the Spirit or the fruits of the flesh? So in order to be light, first, we've got to repent Second, we have to fill ourselves with the light of Jesus. And third thing that we have to do is we have to be humble enough to let that light, let the light of Jesus expose things 
in our life, expose what the Bible's going to call dark corners of our life. If you look at this passage, the, the, the passage from the Sermon on the Mount in, in Luke, it reads this way. No one lights a lamp and then hides it or puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all who enter the house. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when it is unhealthy, your body is filled with darkness. Make sure that the light you think you have is not actually darkness. If you are filled with light, with no dark corners, then your whole life will be radiant, as though a floodlight were filling you with light. So let me ask you, what are the dark corners of your life? Maybe, maybe you know, a long time ago, you, you received Christ into your life and, and you've been living it out, but maybe there are parts of your life that you haven't given over to God. What are those areas? What are those areas of your life that, that you don't trust God? Where you say, you know what, God, I, I think you can handle these areas of my life, but, but this one right here, I'm, I'm going to take control of. I don't trust you maybe maybe to handle my finances. Or I don't trust you to, to help raise my kids. I'm, I'm going to do it my way. What are those areas? Do you show God's love to some and withhold it from others? That's a dark corner. Is there hidden sin in your life that you haven't repented of? Because that's a dark corner. Is, is being a follower of Christ or a child of God your primary identity or does it take second place to something else? Are you trusting something else more than you're trusting God? Maybe, maybe you've put your faith in, in finances and not in God. Maybe you've put your faith in your abilities and not in God. Maybe you've put your faith in a political party and not in God. That's a dark corner. And we have to we have to let the light of Jesus expose that. And, and again, we go back to the we go back to the first step, and, and we repent. We repent of that. The closer that we walk with Jesus, the closer that we are close to that light, the more and more it's going to expose things in our life, and that is a good thing. Because in this verse, we we want we want this to happen to us. If we are filled with light, with no dark corners then your whole life will be radiant as though floodlight were filling it with light. Then we can be a light to others. Then we can be a light in this dark world. So let me ask you, just with everything going on today, I just want to have just a bit of a, a, a real talk discussion here. Some of us have attached ourselves so strongly to other identities that when, when what we have attached ourselves to comes in conflict with our call as followers of Christ, we tend to put our call as followers of Christ on the shelf so that we can feed that other identity, that lesser identity. And let me tell you, that is not how we should be as followers of Christ. That, that lesser identity might be the political party we follow, that lesser identity might be uh, our nationality, that lesser identity may be the color of our skin, that lesser identity might be the, the church we go to. But let me tell you, our identity as followers of Christ should be our number one priority. And anything that comes in conflict with that should be cut off, should be secondary. So don't let anything secondary to following Christ Come in, come in your way of our call to be light to others. Come in our way of fulfilling the call of being a follower of Christ. So why is this all important? Why is, why is all of this important? Why should we be a light in darkness? Why should we take this great opportunity to shine our light in a dark place? It is because you us, this church, God's church, we are to be the light because if we don't shine, where will the light come from? If, if we don't go into the dark places, how will there be light there? 
the interesting thing is that that darkness in and of itself, it's not an actual thing. Darkness is simply the absence of light. Darkness just means there isn't any light there. So it doesn't matter how bright you think your light is, even the smallest bit of light in a dark place is going to make an impact. The smallest bit of light, especially in a very, very dark place, the darker the place, remember, the greater the opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity to let your light shine. If you're, if you're looking in your life and you're like, man, that is a dark place, maybe it's dark because you are not there. I want to end um, just reading a quote from Dr. King. Uh, many of you have heard me talk about this book before. It's called Strength to Love. It's, it's a compilation of uh, some of his messages that, that he preached during his time, uh, time here on earth. But I just want to read this, uh, this excerpt from you because I think it's very fitting to close with. It says, The church must be reminded that it is not the master or the servant of the state, but rather the conscience of the state. And he's talking about the government. It must be the guide and the critic of the state and never its tool. If the church does not recapture its prophetic zeal, it will become an irrelevant social club without moral or spiritual authority. If the church does not participate actively in the struggle for peace and for the economic and racial justice, it will forfeit the loyalty of millions and cause men everywhere to say that it has atrophied its will. But if the church will free itself from the shackles of a deadening status quo and recovering its great historic mission will speak, act, speak and act fearlessly and insistently, in terms of justice and peace, it will enkindle the imagination of mankind and fire the souls of men, imbuing them with a glowing and ardent love for truth, justice, and peace. Men far and near will know the church as a great fellowship of love that provides light and bread for lonely travelers at midnight. I don't know about you, but I want to be known as a church that provides light to people. I want to be known as, as people of Christ who provide light and love to a broken and hurting country, to a broken and hurting community, to a broken and hurting world. Will you be a light this week? Jesus is the light of the world, and he has commissioned his followers to be the light in this world. And I want to challenge you to obey that call. The Word of God tells us to not just be hearers of the Word, but doers. Not just to come and let our ears get tantalated, but to actually bring that into our lives in a very real way. And that's why we're offering these next steps. We've got two next steps uh, to maybe help you in your attempt to obey God's word. And the first one is this. Let me put it up on the, on the slide here. The first one is this. I will let the light of Jesus expose my dark corners and repent. I will let Jesus' light shine into those areas of my life that I may be protective of, that I am, they're the dark corners of my life. After today, I am going to invite him in and I will repent. If that's you, please let us know that you're taking that next step. And that is a courageous next step. The second one is this. It's I will let my light shine in a dark place. I will let my light shine in a dark place. Uh, that may be uh, at work when someone makes a crude joke. It may be in social media context. It may be with your children in some way you're going to bring Jesus' light, his, his light of his gospel or the truth of morality into the place that God has placed you. If, if that's you, oh, please let us know. We want to pray for you. We want to encourage you because all of us as followers of Jesus, God is calling us to be light in this world. If you have a prayer request or you have 
another kind of commitment you'd like to make, please let us know. You can text Genesis at 231-412-2866. Please let us know and may God be with you. God, we thank you for your love and for your kindness and goodness to us. Thank you for all that you've done, Lord God, and as a result, we just want to serve you with our lives and worship you with our hearts. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me.
inside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me Jesus, the name above. 